My name is Heinz Gerd Heinz Paul, but they changed my name to Paul Gerd when I came on the ship. I was born in the eastern province in Germany, it's Pommern, the 4th, 1424, 1924. Yeah. Long time, isn't it? Yeah. <laughs> yeah, and then came 1939, and I was 15 years old. And I remember when my grandma told me then, when the war started in Poland, we was only 40 miles or so from the Polish border. I got 18 and I was drafted. That was a week or two weeks before Christmas in 1542. So friends fell pretty quick. But uh, they should have stopped right then, you know. They, they wanted the territories back what they lost after World War II. The one, one. But then they went to Africa, raised hell there. And all the other European countries, they went in, into Russia then in 41, I guess. And it was almost in Moscow, see. You laid in the foxholes. Because the, the bouncing from the big guns and, and what does bullets, the traces, they light up when they shoot them at night, see? The grenades, they shot them. They always hit them the damn telephone lines. And we, I had, we had to fix them. And sometimes the line was broke, you know, we have to find the other side too. That happened that we <laughs> hung up on the Russian line, talked to the Russians. <laughs> But then they circled us in, and we heard always those big uh, army trucks rolling, and we always thought that were our trucks, it was the Russians. They took us on the other end of that little town, and there was a whole bunch of 100 or 200 prisoners of our breed. I mean. One little potato cooked, that's all we got all day. And when we went up, got dizzy, you know, you were so weak. And then we went to Moscow. And you know what they did? They marched us from one end in the city to Moscow, to the main street, to the other end. And the people in the Moscow was in the buildings and, and jubiled and uh, all day marching, no water. And there stood a train with boxcars. In that back cars was on each corner inside a pail of water. And our pris prisoners, we stormed over those cars like a herd of cattle had nothing to drink for two days. So thirsty and worn out. That was from 44, middle of June, in 44. And I came home in August 48. The war was over in 45. And we had good weapons. I mean, I saw those big guns which could uh, ruin the, the big tanks, you know. All make that crap making to make kill people and make the world misery. And when they talk here about war, I tell you they should everybody that talks about it should hang right there on the tree, honest to God. Those poor people. I was in Russia, I feel sorry for them. How too? Because we shut in their houses, the houses had those straw roofs, you know, those uh, like you see in all the films, you know. I used to put a lighter bullet in there that was the house was in flames. And there we walked by, then we walked by too, and I saw those Russian women there sitting by their rooms, and the house still was burning. Eh? What are some of the biggest lessons you learned from your experience in the war? It's, it's foolish. Everybody loses, nobody wins. Max Stach and Anna Stach. That was my grandparents. My, name, my parents' name, Kroll. Eduard, my dad's name, and 
My mother's name was Greta. My relatives were all farmers. My, I was more by my grandparents on a farm. I liked animals. We always was busy. No television, no radio. But my uncle had a radio, and he only put it on for the weather report, account the harvesting in the fields. We always had work, and we always had to help. But our school in our, my village, there was only 16 people, kids, in one class, one teacher. And they never talked back. And if you did something wrong, you might have a little, little clubs on your butt. But you never told it at home. You probably get another one at home. A lot of respect for teachers and police, like it is here now. It's, I can't believe something like that, you know, how they treat here the law of people. In 1952, we left June the 13th. We could pick a ship already, not on a cruise ship. The bed's three high or four high. We could bring over just one box. You know what it started out with? One dollar twenty and my wife ninety cents. Married, I was then uh, 27, 28 when I came over. And she was, of course, two years older, Wilma, and she could do anything. She could put electric wires together, she put electric here in the closets, and we bought this house even. She could go on the roof and fix something, she could do anything. He all this is all her work here. You know, all the uh, she liked to dance. See? My wife. She went here to the German American club. They danced there at Riverfest, and they had all kinds of pictures with their nice outfits, and dresses. And she was 96 years old. See, and I'm 94. And people ask me that I still look so good, and what kept me so young, I said, well, I worked every day in my life, and I did a lot of dancing and kept the girls happy, see? <laughs> and she did too. <laughs> yeah. What is some advice that you would give the younger generation? Uh, well, stay busy, always, always, always. What else? Working, yeah. Another thing is, if you can stay healthy, you know. Little schnapps here and there, that don't bother nobody. But I never was uh, drunk that I don't know what you don't do, you know. I never was stopped for drinking, driving or nothing. Never was in jail except was four years in, in prison of war. Right? So dance, stay healthy and have a few drinks. Yeah, yeah. That's your advice?